The Washington Post has a mind-blowing story on climate change for us. Melting Arctic ice is now pouring 14,000 tons of water per second into the ocean, scientists find. Scientists in the United States, Chile, Canada, Norway, and the Netherlands contributed to the work published in Environmental Research Letters. Quote, the research was performed by merging a highly reliable gravity-based measurement of Arctic mass loss from NASA's gravi Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment satellites with older direct ice measurements taken from the field going back to 1971. The total Arctic loss at present is 447 billion tons of ice per year, which Box calculated is about 14,000 tons of water per second. That's for the period between 2005 and 2015. Between 1986 and 2005, the loss is calculated at around 5,000 tons per second. Therefore, the rate has almost tripled. Holy shit. Separate research has recently found that the Antarctic's loss rate has, has also tripled in just a decade, reaching 219 billion, billion tons per year from 2012 to 2017. Assuming these numbers are correct and summing them together, the world's polar regions are losing about 666 billion tons of ice to the ocean each year, amounting to a little bit less than two millimeters of sea level rise annually. Wow. Now, this is actually one of the more optimistic scenarios because in the article they explain how um, NASA says it's actually three millimeters of sea level rise per year. That is insanely rapid. And I'm of the belief that we are, human beings are acting like the frog in boiling water at the moment. Where you're just kind of casually there and then you're on, you're, you feel like you're on fire and then you die. Like, we haven't treated climate change as if it's a, a catastrophic humanity changing event, but it is. And we're already in the midst of it. Some scientists say we're in the middle of a, um, an apocalyptic event, middle of an extinction event. And that is just absolutely devastating. And we, like, we're not even close to where we need to be. The Paris Climate Agreement, for example, is just a tiny step in the right direction. I mean, in reality, we need to totally get off of fossil fuels. And even if we totally get off of fossil fuels, uh, there's still lingering effects that are horrendously bad. So, I don't know. It's hard not to be long-term pessimistic about this stuff. It really is. Because when you don't see people taking the problem seriously and a lot and let's face it a lot of that has to do with corruption too that's why they're not taking it seriously because the fossil fuel companies have a stranglehold on our government and governments around the world so even though we have you know solar energy and we have plenty of green uh, and renewable technologies we act like oh that wouldn't be enough like it wouldn't be enough to actually transition to that because it's not good enough or no but it is but we just don't do it. <laughs> and we don't do it for money and for corruption. And listen, this is one of many, many, many side effects and downsides. I mean, to appeal to the conservatives, I keep trying to harp away on this fact that you think you've seen a refugee crisis because of the Syrian war. Wait until the entire Middle East has to empty out because it's uninhabitable because it's too hot. That could be by the end of this century, according to many experts. So... Giant refugee crisis, maybe that should help you get your act together and make you think about this problem in as serious a way as it is. When you go to the grocery store and all the prices are through the fucking roof because there's famine and drought and food shortages, when there's wars over water in certain places um, that are uh, strained of resources, I mean, shit is going to get super real, man. All, like, at some point, the apocalyptic sci-fi movies, futuristic movies become real. <laughs> Not day after tomorrow. Sorry, Corin. I don't agree with him on that. He thinks day after tomorrow's. No, that's way over uh, dramatized. But still, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna have like 
dystopian futuristic movies actually come kind of true because you can't escape the consequences of of climate change and and what like what will the rich do well they i mean it's possible they just buy these fucking massively engineered underground bunkers that purify the air or some shit but i don't know it who the fuck knows what they'll do but we're all in trouble and uh numbers like i just read to you should scare the shit out of you